Hey guys, this is uh, O1 Turboku coming at you with another uh, movie review, and I'm coming at you with um, a final continuation from Jaws and everything, sort of starting my fantasy monster stuff, and we are going to start that off with um, something that's sort of based from that with old extinct things, dinosaurs, and the whole lot and whatnot, and that is journey to the center of the earth or 3d or stuff like that but I don't really care for 3d this movie had some pretty good 3d stuff but don't really care about it that much so I won't get focused on into that but um journey to the center of the earth was a retake I think done in I think it was 2006 2007 I can't really be sure of when that was, but it was done around that time. And let's see. It was basically a movie that could have brought upon the idea that what Jules Verne wrote for Journey to the Center of the Earth for his book was actually real, that it could have actually existed. And you know, it's an interesting take and you know and interesting movie, you know, an enjoyable film at that, but um, I'd have to say that yeah, moved really fast and things, but let's get into who was involved in it and why. It starred, uh, yeah, let's see, it starred Brendan Fraser, and Brendan Fraser plays Trevor, who is a scientist whose older brother Max went to look for the center of the earth years ago and disappeared and what happens is is Trevor's a scientist who wants to explain you know the center of the earth activity you know Pangean effects things like that you know no students hardly take his class and you know he's just trying to stay afloat there's this man named uh, Alan who is another professor who wants to run Trevor out of business and it's just hard for Trevor to deal with because, you know, he's trying to keep him and what his brother did alive and apparently Max died. It's been 10 years since his death and whatever happened to his disappearance and he's just trying to keep things afloat and he's sort of a scientist who's into his stuff, a bit of a slob, but Brendan Fraser just really plays it well because when things start happening and they start heading towards the center of the earth, which is actually accidental in the film. You know, you really believe what he can do. He does come off as goofy, nerdy, and scientific, so it works. And, you know, just great role for Brendan Fraser, you know, nice to see him getting back into comedies or family comedies, whichever he does, and just enjoyable to see him do what he can do with these types of things as well. Sorry, a lot of trailed out there. My bad, guys. And, but then we also have um, Josh Hutcherson who plays shoot, who does he play? Um, let's see. What's his name? Um, let's see. Should I... <laughs> I can't remember Josh Hutcherson's name, guys. I I do apologize. And um, Josh Hutcherson plays his nephew, and his nephew is uh, a kid who, you know, was coming to visit him, was coming to visit his uncle, spend some time with him, spend like ten days with him while him and his mother were getting ready to move into Canada, and. He, you know, it seemed like he didn't want to go because it seems like, you know, his uncle Trevor is boring and just not that exciting and, you know, isn't really caring about his work. And what happens is Trevor shows up, or not, not Trevor, his nephew shows up and Trevor plays, or, sorry, trailing off guys, his nephew but, uh, sorry guys, his nephew shows up and, you know, they go through, um, 
some of his uncles, his Max's old things, and he's just trying to fit certain things in and get certain things done, and you know, it just comes in and becomes all. What's here? Is any of these showing up? I should have done. Okay, I guess I showed up now and is it recorded? Well, sorry guys, I'm not going to restart and apologies if this interview seems bad, but his nephew shows up and they start going through, there we go, his father, who is Max, his father's Max's things and they find that in his book of Jules Verne, Journey to the Center of the Earth, which was um, Max's favorite book, we learn that that Max was writing down notes for their actual things for the center of the Earth, and Trevor finds how, you know, there was a connection between the uh, sensors they had set up to match the seismic activity they were measuring, and Trevor helps them point out that there's a fourth one that shows up when there were only originally three that was in Iceland. And they had to Iceland and go on the adventure as well through the center of the earth. And Josh Hutcherson, you know, plays the hip kid and his nephew's like hip into technology, you know, wants to do things and he's got like a rad sort of attitude and it's, you know, pretty good. It's not that bad. And Josh Hutcherson does some pretty good work in this movie. And then there's, um, uh, Anita, Anita Briam, who plays, uh, their guide, or I should say, um, is a father to, or is a character who is the father of a person that Max went to see. He's called Sigeborn as Gearson, and he was a fellow Vernian who believed in the center of the earth theory. And Max went to see him, so Trevor and his nephew head to Iceland, where where they believe this person is. And um, the daughter, the guide of theirs, was the daughter of Sigmund Asgirson. And Asgirson, I'm just going to call her because I can't remember her name too. I'm sorry, I'm going to try to US IMDB this stuff in the future so I don't forget if I do. But she takes them to find the sensor which is on top of a mountain and she guides them and you know she's a rough tough type of girl and you know she brings them to the mountain Trevor finds the um oh the sensor that was you know communicating and he wanted to check the uh, signatures and the box to see what is was relaying back for images and then there's like lightning gets lightning is attracted to the sensor and the lightning chases all of them into the cave and uh, basically they get trapped and this guide is the one getting them through the whole thing that leads them to the center of the earth where they go on this huge grand adventure and she's sort of like a guide throughout the entire movie as well as a you know sort of a bit of a motherly figure for both uh, the nephew and Trevor. And, you know, overall, the film is, you know, good. The CGI and the 3D are actually pretty good. If you can get a TV that can do it like it's done well, it's better to me than what Avatar was. And, you know, the plot is pretty straightforward, pretty simple. I do like how they make a distinction that the center of the Earth was actually real, that um, the main character, Lytlebrock, you know, told Jules Verne about it, and Jules Verne, like, copied it down. It's like a type of journal that it actually existed, so it wasn't really a sci-fi book. It was something that could have happened. I liked that aspect to it, and I liked how it was real. And once again, funny moments, funny stuff, and, you know, decent length of a picture. You know, that's not bad, and, you know, it's pretty enjoyable. And overall, you know, I'd say this movie is, you know, decent, because I will say the pacing is very fast. I think it's way too fast, and, you know, they didn't use a lot of time to try to explore the type of world. It was like a quick thing where they're there, you know, they're excited by what they see. They discover that Max died down there, and then it's like all of a sudden, oh, the temperature's rising. We need to get out of here. It's just like in the book, but they're, you know, it was like a quick 
snappy process. It wasn't like periodically brought to our attention, which I would have enjoyed. I would have enjoyed a nicer pacing because I think the pacing was just a little too fast in the film. But other than that, you know, decent movie, decent effects. The score that's done by let's see who let's say who did the score in this movie, um, producer oh by Andrew Lockington. You know, Andrew Lockington who did the score did a decent job and you know entertaining score, so nothing too major, nothing too bad. And I discovered that this was done by um by uh, let's see uh, a Wal yeah, Walden Media and New Line Cinema. New Line Cinema, everybody knows, but Walden Media, the same people who did uh, um, The Bridge to Terabithia and the Chronicles of Narnia trilogy that they've done. And I completely forgot that they were a part of it. And I have to say, once again, you know, decent movie and pacing could be better, but definitely within Walden Media's imagination to do. So overall, I give this movie like 7 out of 10, which is my okay decent scoring. I say like 6 and 7 are okay. Anywhere from 8 through 10 are the best scores. But I give this movie a 7 out of 10, you know. Decent scoring and decent stuff. So, you know, if you want, just let me know if you've seen this movie. What you thought? What you thought of the 3D? Was it alright for you? Was it, you know, too kiddish? Is it ridiculous? You know, just drop your lines and let me know how you think and stuff, alright? Okay, then. But until then, this is Oh, one, two, Boku, coming at you, and I will see you guys later, alright? Okay, bye-bye.